This is the old panel. And you can see that it's really a rat's nest. There's a lot of things in there. Uh, they hooked up the wires multiple ways. They've run a separate jumper box over here to the side and tied that into the two range connectors. One on this side up at the top, one at that side. You can see that it's the white wire and the green wire right there. Mm -hmm. Those ran to the old service cable that ran over to the range that is no longer being used. Right. So we're going to strip those out and those won't be there anymore. When we do the new uh, service panel, the way we're going to do it, we're going to take a jumper wire from this panel and run it over into this panel and mount a 60 amp breaker inside the panel. Then we're, when we power up this panel, the way we'll go at it is we'll just turn on that 60 amp breaker. This, power, this panel will be powering up the bars inside the, the main breaker panel and we'll be able to feed power into these bars and then when, we, when we're doing the changeover, we'll just pull a wire out of this, tie it into a breaker, clip it onto the bus bar and turn the breaker on. The power will come from this panel through the 60 amp breaker into that bus bar and then out of that bus bar into the breaker and on into the sub circuit. That way we'll be able to do a switch over without having a whole lot of time without power. The thing you have to remember is when you're back feeding a panel, say we're taking power from this old panel and putting it into the new panel, we have to have the 200 amp breaker in the off position. That way power can't come out of this panel up to the new meter socket. So we have that breaker off, the 60 amp breaker on, we pull power from this panel, back feed that panel, back feed the sub circuits. When we get consumers out here and they hook up the new 200 amp service, then we'll turn off the 60 amp breaker going into this panel and turn on the, the 200 amp main. By that time we should have pretty much everything swapped out of the old box. If we don't have it swapped out, all we'll do is leave on the 60 amp main and back feed this panel then. We just have to make sure that while we're working on it, whatever thing we're working on is dead. So we want to be able to turn off the breaker that feeds whatever we're working on. Yep. As we're drilling through, what I'm, gonna, <coughs> what I'm doing is I'm rocking the drill motor. What that does is it makes one side of the saw cut, then the other side, so that it's only cutting a smaller amount. It cuts a little easier, it's not as hard on your hands. Picked up another layer of something. We have to keep pulling the little layers out of there because they'll bottom out in the saw. Next up on History's Mysteries, what did they do when they made this house? Well, the clapboard is angled. So we have one flat board that hides in behind the other. It's an overlap like that. So as you're drilling through, you cut through two of them usually. Right. You 
if you buy a good hole saw, it'll cut through steel just as well as it does wood. Uh huh. That way you don't have to worry about nails. Right. Yeah. If you buy a cheap hole saw, you end up hitting a nail and dulling it, and then you buy two. Yeah. Cheaper to buy a good one to start with. Also saves you all the time of having to spend forever drilling the thing. The inside of the hole saw has a ridge on it. That ridge stops us from drilling all the way through a 2x4, which is the uh, joist on the inside of the house. You can tell it's doing that because the shiny polished spot on the inside of the wood there, around the outer edge of the, of the plug, tells me that ring's rubbing on it. the end of this conduit so that it will slip over that one. The reason for that is we're just making a coupling in the end of the conduit. This looks like an oversized hair dryer. It's basically what it is. It's got a bunch of heating elements in, the, in this tube and it's got a blower. You'd think that you'd be able to use a hair dryer, but it's just not enough power. Now this one's kind of overkill. You can get by with an economy one. I have a much smaller one that uh, I got at a flea market that came from an auto parts store used for shrink, shrink wrap tubing. And that works. It, but on a big tube like this, it takes a long time to heat it up. Something small like half inch, yeah, that'll work fine. But you want to keep it moving too. If I just, with this big gun, if I just left it in one spot for too long, it would burn it. I'm watching the end as I'm heating this. It gets shiny as it gets warm. How hot is does that uh, heat gun get? It'll melt solid. Whew. So a good five six hundred degrees. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bump showing up on the end of the tube. We're going to try it on the piece of conduit, see if we can get it to swell up. Set that on cool. That way the elements will cool down and they won't sit there smoking on it. That's how it works. Awesome. So one thing I noticed that you did, you didn't put it directly onto the end of the tube. You used the corner of the tube first. Right. Putting the corner of the tube allows me to kind of swage it and open that tubing up. Let it slip over the end a little easier. 
and call you Patrick Swagey. Ah, uh, uh, that was me. That was my joke. You're welcome, YouTube. <laughs>
Gluing to get a PVC pipe, you need to use cleaner and cement. You can glue it together without the cleaner, but the cleaner makes it set up faster. And if you're doing PVC pipe for plumbing, the inspector is going to come look at it and see if there's purple on it because that's how he knows that you've used purple primer. That's why it's purple. Yep. I'd always wondered. If you don't use purple primer, you will not pass inspection. You will not collect $200 and your permit will be revoked. So you'll get to cut out all that stuff that doesn't have the purple on it and throw it away. That's bad. So when you wonder why there's purple crap all over your pipe, the plumber says, I don't want to have a problem. I'm going to make sure he sees it. <laughs> I've, I've actually wondered. I figured it was it's like that pink stuff that the pink spackle that dries white. It's your plumber saying we don't want to do this twice because the second time's free. We just slip this little insert right in there and put that over it and give it a little twist make sure that I've got a, a good spread of the glue around the fitting and then we let it sit. Awesome. That's how you glue PVC pipe. Oh, wait a minute. 